Chapter 6, The Battle of Zaofu. Here we go. Oh. Oh, is that Su Yin? Right, they're infiltrating. Tonight, we end her reign of terror. Hmm. This is pretty awesome. Su Yin ninja mission. I wonder if the writers played Metal Gear Solid, because this reminds me so much of the opening sequence. But with crazy bending abilities. She's alone in there. Seems too good to be true. Whoa. Just Whoa. Don't hurt me. Yeah. Julie. You fell for it. I knew you'd try sneak attack. You were afraid to step up and leave the Earth Kingdom when you had the chance. And now you're afraid of a fair fight. I was actually wondering about something related to this. Su Yin had the opportunity to do something to help stabilize the Earth Kingdom. And if she had done just a little something, this might have all been avoided. And the reason she stated for that was she didn't want to spread her ideals or something like that. I couldn't help but wonder if that's the whole story or if she's also you know, thinking about the self-preservation of herself and the city. Which is not unreasonable, but at least when this started, it seems like Kuvira actually did have some legitimate reason to want to do this. And then, you know, power just got to her head. Like Toph said, all these villains have their ideas, but they just take them too far. If we go charging into Kuvira's camp, we could get them all captured, or worse. All we can do now is wait. Wow. Citizens of Zhao Fu, your leader, Su Bei Fong, Attempted well. to attack me tonight while I slept. I will not take revenge on the peaceful citizens of Zhao Fu as long as your remaining representatives meet me outside the city at dawn. So Kuvira got what Su Yin wanted, which is taking out the leader and letting the whole thing fall. One key quality between a lot of the villains in this show, they're so calculating and like patient. They have like neutral Jing or whatever. <laughs> Kor also is kind of showing that same quality. She's sort of just being a little bit more open, a little more willing to wait things out and see how they go without rushing in which shows a lot of development for her character, I think. I don't care about the oath. I have to save my family. Okay. No, Janora is right. Your mom attacked the camp. Why is that loudspeaker lady talking when I'm trying to sleep? A man needs his rest. I promise I'll do everything I can to keep the peace. No hot towels. Waxy buildup. Julie! She really is gone. It's okay, she's doing some good work right now. She'll be back soon. Well, I'm really only productive for about 15 minutes a day, usually in the afternoon around 3.45. It's amazing. I can't be expected to work without an assistant. One of the guards will be your assistant. As long as he doesn't need his hands afterwards. <laughs> What's he talking about, <laughs> sir? Maybe we should just let the kid help him out. Right. Good thinking. I need my hands. If Ming Hua can do it, so can you. Where's Bolin? I know he would never go along with this. I assure you, he's on board with my plans. You two have been apart for some time. Kuvira has all the leverage here, so there's really not much you can do. But that being said, I admire Korra for taking it this far and actually, you know, trying this out. Kuvira is really good at getting in people's heads and also predicting their actions. And part of that is her ability to see people's desires and fears. Like she got to her fiance really well. She's getting to Opal's fear of Bolin. She kind of drew Sue out of her hiding to get exactly what she wanted. She's really good at this. I can't just let you take the city. Avatar Korra, you are interfering with internal Earth Empire business and letting your personal feelings get in the way of reason. Mm, and now she's getting into Korra's head too, because that's something that Korra will definitely worry about. One of the biggest challenges of the Avatar is not overstepping. If Korra is imposing her will, absolutely, then she's also a dictator. I mean, obviously that's not what's going on, but it's a legitimate thing for Kuvira to try to draw out of Korra. This is about equality. Kuvira really is playing a masterful game here. She holds all the cards. In a way, Kuvira is counting on her opponents being reasonable. And there's something very lifelike about that. Like, people who are very open and intuitive and are, are always kind of seeking the truth and trying to absorb information. I think that's a strength for life, but there's also a potential weakness there, which is that it makes you hesitate. Like, you may undervalue your own capabilities relative to the world. Because one side effect of like deep diving into things is you realize there's a whole world that was invisible to you before. So with ethical issues and societal issues and all this stuff, it's natural to develop a healthy fear of being too certain about things. But the issue with that is that it sometimes allows people who are less suited or less capable rise to these positions because they're not hesitant. They don't have that fear of being wrong or they don't have that humility. So sometimes in these situations, what happens is the people who rise to the top are 
maybe people who are less qualified than others would be if they had the confidence to step into it. And I don't think Kavir is less capable. I think she's aware of this thing and she's she's playing it. It's hard to argue with her. She's flying under the banner of things that nobody disagrees with. Like she's flying under the banner of equality. And so anybody who is like a reasonable thinking person is like, well, yeah, I mean, equality, that's great. It puts you on your back foot a little bit. Plus she has a huge army. <laughs> she has all the forward momentum. So the only way to beat her is for them to be really resolute in, in their decision against her. You don't care about equality. This is about control. Opal's got it. It looks like you're not giving me a choice. Cora, if you win, then you can do whatever you want with Zalfu. Whoa. But after I beat you, I want you out of my business for good. She's so good at this. You want to fight the Avatar? Then let's finish this. Uh oh, right of course here, not. Right now. Why? All there yet? Is she? Why do I feel like this whole thing is just a game of pie show for Kuvira? <laughs> She's just like neatly arranging the pieces the way she wants. This might have been her end goal all along. It seems like maybe she's trying to like funnel Korra into having no choice but to face her. But she's so prepared. Are you really ready to fight her? Just stay right? back and let me handle this. She hasn't seen Kuvira fight, right? Oh no, she's playing with her. <laughs> oh no. Looks like the Avatar is a little off her game. If you lose this, I don't know what Don't let her you get too so frustrated. She wants you to make a mistake. Right. That's her whole thing. <laughs> oh no. It's so interesting. This is such a different style of bending. Like we've had these grand epic battles recently. This feels so intimate, but it's so cool. I mean, Kuvira can beat her at any time. Meanwhile, Bolin, do the thing. What thing? The thing! Walk me through what you're doing. I want to know every detail of your work. This is like Breaking Bad. I hope things end better for Suyin's son than it did for whatever that weird guy's name was. Clean energy! Sounds great! Who doesn't like that stuff? Let's do that instead! You're here to help, not talk. You don't know Bolin. It is our responsibility as scientists to pursue it as far as we can. How would you know? You couldn't discover a wolf bat if it was building a nest in your butt. <laughs> Burn. The last time we ran the current through the vine, we couldn't control the power. So I'm trying something new to see if I can direct it. <laughs> I love how you can see the wheels turning. There you go. Come on, Cora. <laughs> Ugh, I can't believe you're helping them. You know this isn't right. Trust me, kid. I know what I'm doing. This is cute. I love this. There we go. What's that ticking? That's the timer. The timer for what? For the bomb, of course. That was bold. Olin and I are ready to go down with the ship, or train in this case, but you seem like you have a lot to live for. No, 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 no. I'm not ready to go down <laughs> with the ship. I knew it. You'll be sorry you left me, Julie. When they write the history books, your name will be synonymous with betrayal. Bull is freaking out. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Well, that was cool. What's Kavira's plan for this? Drop a rock on her. <laughs> she can't do it. I knew you were weak. So that was her plan all along. She just knew Korra inside and out and knew that she wouldn't do anything about it. Kavira is like the, the book Art of War incarnate. Everything she does is so tactically perfect. I mean, she took a risk there. She could have gotten crushed by that rock, but I mean, there she is. But that's just... You broke our agreement! That guarantees force, yeah. Wow. Smart. Keep them back! I'm calling for help! So cool. Stunning work, Iki. Wow. It hurts my eyes with its raw emotional power. Ah, pedestrian. I already know <laughs> oh, what you no. look like on the outside. I want you to show me the inner Milo. I mean, I feel like that is the inner Milo. Let's take a look at that again. That is 100% the inner Milo. Look at him. Look at his cute little cheeks. <laughs> Help! You have to get Cora and the rest of us out of here now! Man, that was great! I gotta admit, you had me going there for a while. I really thought you... No, it's real. We're gonna blow up. But <laughs> we had a pretty good run, right? I'll see you on the other side, Julie. I want you to know I hate you. Now I think he's dead. That's good. Die! Die! Here comes 
Get him, Milo. This kid's going berserk. Now bow. Wow. <sighs> this guy's so ungrateful. She is your rightful leader. I'm so disappointed in you, oh. Junior. Get your hands off me! We're all disappointed You're in you, my Junior. individuality. How would you like to help Batar build the most powerful weapon the world has ever seen? It would be my honor, Great Uniter. Begin dismantling the domes. Wow, that was a really fun episode. Guvira is so good, I'm appreciating her more and more as a villain. Because it's not just her physical power, she's just playing things from every angle. And she's so good at getting in people's heads and knowing where they're at and what their weaknesses are. And then she herself doesn't seem to have any. She's built this totally fortified front that just seems unstoppable. I mean, the only way I can see is like Korra just getting more powerful and crushing her. But she's obviously still being held back by some new awareness she has, I guess, of what the villains are and how they're connected to herself in some way. Because she saw her own face in Kuvira. There's a lot to think about with Korra in relation to the villains and the villains in relation to the world, you know, because all the villains, as Toph pointed out, you know, there, there's some element of truth to what they're saying. And there's also some element of them in Korra. Like she has the potential to be all these villains herself. She's a human being. She has a lot of power. She could become an evil ruler. It's all there for her. And so it's like the, the villains are a reflection of herself in some way, which is kind of a cool thought. You know, I think like we like to separate ourselves from things we consider bad, you know, like if there's somebody doing something detestable, it's easy for us to categorize them as in a way inhuman, but that's just not the case, you know, like everybody has, is human and everybody has the capacity for, for great evil. I feel like what Korra is going through is part of a natural stage of self-awareness, like it's really difficult to find the balance between being effective, being assertive, standing up for what you feel right, while also being open and reasonable and compassionate, you know, it's very difficult. So I empathize greatly with Korra, and I often hear that other reactors talk about Korra like she's weak or has no personal growth. For me, I really don't see it that way. I think like she's taking on things in a really big way, in a really human way that is kind of cool. It's cool to see her go through this. Obviously, I want Kavira to be stopped, but I think if Korra gets through this alive, both she and the world will be much better off for it, for her having gone down these avenues and been really considerate, maybe overly considerate, as well as having times where she was overly assertive. It's all Korra striving to find a balance where she can be effective without being a tyrant, like the villains of the show. All right, that's the end of this episode. I really enjoyed this one. I look forward to seeing you all very soon, tomorrow, for episode seven. <laughs>